By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a game that has been played quite a while ago when we could still play face-to-face -face magic. I thought it would be nice to show you one of these games again and i'm actually not playing in this matchup we are looking at two players the player on the left is called richard and he's playing with an ice prison deck and the player on the right is called frank and he's playing with atok green so looking forward to see two completely different decks battling it out of course the atok deck will be aggressive and the prison deck will be more under control mid game late game scenario so um what i'm going to do here i'm going to continue with the deck text now if you'd like to go straight to the match itself no worries check the description below and click on the timestamp and here we are going to continue with discussing the decks and this is the deck of richard and it's called well i've actually called it ice prison and the reason because of that are these two key cards icy manipulator and winter orb so with the icy manipulator he can tap his own winter orb and that shuts it off. So there are two cards in the game, artifacts in the game that actually have this mechanic. Winter Orb is one of them. So basically what you want to do is at the end of your opponent's turn, you want to tap down your Winter Orb. That means it doesn't work anymore. So then in your untap step, you get to untap everything, all your lands, everything. But your opponent then again has the problem of having to deal with the Winter Orb because it's untapped again. So that's kind of your advantage here. Uh, interesting is that he's playing very heavily on it. Four Winter Orb, four Relic Barriers, three icy manipulators there are not a lot of lists that are so aggressively on this plan obviously the four power sinks work perfectly together tapping down all the mana of your opponent what's interesting is because he's playing with blue he doesn't have any artifact removal so i'm, I'm very curious to see how he's going to deal with the artifact mana that are going to be produced by his opponent. Of course, we do see some boomerangs. He's got a lot of counter spells, so maybe he wants to counter. And also, I think that's an interesting card here as well, Hercules Recall. He can use that two ways. So he can use it to protect his artifacts, and he can also kind of use it against his opponent, maybe at the end step, forcing him to discard certain key cards. So that's definitely going to be a card that I'm going to keep an eye out. I think City in a Bottle is not going to be as relevant in this matchup since the Atok player is not playing with a lot of um, Arabian Knights, as far as I know. Uh, a really nice card here as well is the three Transmute Artifacts. So he's really going aggressively on the Winter Orb combo here, and if he cannot find it, maybe he's just drawing into tons of Relic Barriers, for example. He can use his Transmute Artifact as a tutor, and remember, he can also use it to tutor his Chaos Orb, which is basically removal, so he can remove everything. So... I think Transmute Artifacts are going to play a very big role in here. Um, interesting to see is that there's no way for him to get anything out of his graveyard. I don't see a Time Twister, for example, in this deck. So, interesting. And I think when one, once the lock is like online, he just wants to kill his opponent um, with the Mishra's Factories, it seems. So, this is really one of those grindy decks you know this ice prison player this chart he wants to play a long game he wants to play control so maybe we're going to see very long games but then again he's playing against an atok player and atok player wants to play really quick games really fast games talking about atok let's take a look at frank's list so this is the atok brew of frank and as you can see i don't have a deck picture but i have a pretty good idea of what his deck does and what he wants to do so what's interesting with atok is that a lot of players are trying to break the code and of course we've seen some very strong brown red atok decks and of course with that splash of power blue in there because what happens is you play very aggressively what happens with an aggressive deck you end up with no cards in your hand so you need your time twister you need your extra turn maybe to finish off your opponent with time walk you need your ancestral recall to draw three and of course you also have your wheel of fortune in that deck so there are, those are some really nice ways to kind of refill your hand but of course green has his own drawing engine in the form of sylvan library so with sylvan library you can also quickly draw your cards now you may think okay but that's going to cost you life that doesn't really matter when you're the green atop player what you want to do you just want to smash smash face as fast as you can, as quick as you can, you're not gonna think about tomorrow, you're thinking about today, you know, you're not gonna look back at yesterday, you're gonna think about today and you wanna kill your opponent. So this is going to be very interesting from that perspective because we have the Aether player that's traditionally aggro brew, 
and he is actually taking on a deck that wants to to uh, that wants again to progress slow, that wants to take its time, that wants to go into the late game. So we're going to see two decks that have a very different agenda. And now looking at specifically at this Aetor Brew, um, he's playing with Berserks, obviously that works really nice with the Aatox, and then trying to use Avoid Fates to protect the Aatox when he chooses to Berserk. I think this is very risky, uh, risky because the blue player is packing eight counter spells, so that's huge, a lot of counter spells. And even, um, I think, even in response to the sack, he can play Hercules Recall to bounce the artifacts back to uh, to the hand of Frank. So that's also going to be interesting to see if Richard is maybe going to do that. I do think that after sideboarding, the green player can, of course, board in red elemental blasts, and they are going to be huge against this blue player because red elemental blasts. There are targets everywhere. Usually, when you have a red elemental blast sideboard, it's difficult to board in because your opponent only splashes, for example, the blue power. But against a deck that's so heavily relying on blue, it's great for the Atok player because he can just put a, a full four copies in there. So I'm really looking, uh, well, not looking forward, but I'm curious to see how that will kind of you know develop and 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 how Frank will deal with that and how Richard will will deal in response obviously he's going to board in his his blue elemental blasts but it's it, it could be a very tactical game again that is in the advantage of the blue player I think because the blue player wants to make the game a grindy game if the game turns into a grindy game the blue player will probably win and of course the Ankh of Mishra of the Atok player usually it's a very good card but maybe in this matchup it could start working against him because he's facing all those winter orbs so um, these are my thoughts about both of these decks. Let's quickly go to game number one. And yes, we are off to start with game number one. We have Richard sitting on the left with his Ice Prison deck. And on the right, we have Frank with his Atok Brew. So with the Timmy playmat. And uh, let's see how this is going to unfold. I believe Richard is on the play. And look at that, slamming his mocks here on the table. Not a blue one, so he cannot counter yet. So basic island and a mox here. Good start for Richard. And there's a single Mishra's Factory with past turn. Another blue. Probably going to keep this open to counter. So he's, yeah, he's passing turn here to Frank. And now it's going to be interesting for Frank what he wants to do. Is he going to kind of play into the counter spell? Is there even a counter spell? But I think you should keep that in the, in, in the, in the back of your head. Of course, you can also just activate your factory and, and come at Richard for two since he's not playing with red or white. Attacking here for two, so Richard to 18. Richard is not countering the soul ring, so maybe he doesn't have a counter spell or doesn't think it's important enough. Ooh, this is interesting, a Tabernacle. And Tabernacle is a legendary land from Legends, and that means that all the creatures in play have an upkeep cost of one generic mana. And of course, that's really nice to use in combination with Winter Orb because your opponent will not have a lot of lands available because all his lands are tapped down and then he needs to, the little mana that he has, he has to invest that in keeping his creatures alive. So I think Tabernacle is a quite quite a nice inclusion here in this uh, in this deck of uh, Richard. And let's see what Frank is going to do, because it looks like Richard just passed turn. He doesn't have two blue open anymore. And tapping, playing an Atok and an Ankh of Mishra. Will we see, because the Ankh of Mishra, he could perhaps power sink, but there's no power sink here from Richard. So just drawing a card. That means that next turn, Frank can start dealing some damage. There's an Icy Manipulator. Untapping, now he has to pay for the Tabernacle. So he's going to pay one and draw for turn. He can just attack for three, I guess. Playing a Mana Vault, that's risky because of that Icy Manipulator, but of course he can eat it. And he's going to animate Attack for 2. Attack for 3, exactly. Or actually, of course it's tapped down. No, he couldn't attack yet, it's still at Summoning Sickness, my bad. And will we see a Winter Orb now? Oh, we see Transmute Artifact, so he's going to sacrifice his... Mana Rock, and he's going to look up the Winter Orb here. And of course, those Transmute Artifacts are so important for him to find the pieces of the puzzle. And this already means um, some problems here for Richard, because he can only untap one land, so... But he has a lot of Artifact Mana, so it's not too bad. 
So it's going to untap, and now is he going to invest the soul ring? He can, of course, use the soul ring to animate his factory and to pay for his ATOC. And it's always difficult to see here from the screen what he actually has done. And it looks like he wants to go into attack in response. Richard is tapping down the Mishra's factory. He's playing a land now. That means he's going to take damage. And that's kind of what I talked about um, prior to this uh, matchup in the introduction is that th those uh, factory or those Ankh of Mishra's could start working against him because of that Winter Orb deck. And this is interesting what he's doing now. He's using his factory to pump his ATOC, dealing three more damage here to Richard. It's hard to see his life total. But I believe it's around the 15 somewhere. Untapping, of course, having to pay again for Tabernacle. And look at that. He's using his ICD shirt to tap down even more lands. And interesting to see that Frank didn't use his um, Soul Ring mana. Attacking here for one. And that means he's going to 14, I believe. And he's playing another Transmute Art... Oh, he's playing a Hercules Recall. Returning all the artifacts to Frank's hand. And that's going to be difficult, because it's going to be difficult for him to, to play them out again. And he also has to discard. Look at that. And this is basically what the blue prison deck wants to do. Now, Frank is now pretty much in a prison... Doesn't have enough mana next turn probably to play out all his resources with that icy manipulator on the board as well. He's just gonna pass turn, gonna untap one, gonna use it to keep his ATOC alive perhaps. That's what he does, gonna draw for turn. Maybe he has a land, that would be really nice. A soul ring, land, soul ring, mana vault. Let's see what he's going to do. So there we see a mana vault, interesting choice. Oh, and then he uses that to play both. Okay. And I guess Richard is asking, which one are you playing first? And then he uses the Power Sync to cancel the Soul Ring play. And that means that Frank is going to... Okay, he's sacking um, the Mana Vault to the Atok. That means that Richard, I believe he's now at 8... So there, there is still some opportunity for Frank, but I think it's going to be really difficult because he's going to untap a land, having to pay that again for Tabernacle, and then he has that Icy to tap down the Atok. I think what he needs now is just to, the, the good old red direct damage. Just uh, draw into some Lightning Bolts. Playing a Factory here. Going to declare his attack, and that's going to be interesting to see what, what Richard's going to do. Just, he's just going to take the damage, going to 7, and he's going to use his Icy to tap down the Mishra's factory. So he's really focused on the lands. And of course, this is also a nice card. You don't see it that often anymore. Uh, it's the card that you cannot untap any creatures with power greater of 2. And I believe it's called Meek Stone. There is an attack again. So slowly but surely, uh, Richard is going down here and he's activating the factory, sacking it to the ATOC in response to Boomerang. Ay, 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 that's rough. Because those three damage, they were important. And of course, the Meek Stone doesn't really work against ATOC, but it, it does wonders against all other creatures. I believe this deck is packing some Suchis. Playing that city in a bottle, not going to be that much of a of a fuss for Frank. I think the Icy Manipulator is really the deal breaker here. And he just needs Lance. And look at that. He's actually discarding. No, he's playing it. Okay, I thought he was discarding it. Okay, so he untaps, then he taps. Okay, now I get it. So Richard's on four. Ooh, he's on one. He's so close now. And of course, what's happening here is when um, Frank is untapping his land in response, Richard says, okay, after the untap, I'm going to tap your land again with my manipulator. And then Frank says, okay, then I'm going to use the rat mana to play an instant. And an instant is a lightning bolt. 
And this is what happens a lot when you're a prison player. You really have to grind it out. He's still on one. I mean, he, he's, he can still win this one. And of course, Frank has now played out two Lightning Bolts. So that means he has two more in his deck. And is he also playing with Chain Lightnings? But of course, a Chain Lightning he cannot play in his upkeep. So if he can draw into a land and into a Chain Lightning, that's also another way that he can win. <laughs> Look at that. He's showing his Copper Tablet. So if he can play out the Copper Tablet, he wins. But two mana just seems so far away right now in the current scenario. And of course, he's untapping everything, doing his little tappy trick there with the Winter Orb and the Icy. Showing that he has a Power Sink. And that's not great. That means that Frank actually needs more cards. He does have land there in his hand, but he only wants to play the land if he can use it straight away. So that makes sense. He's going to discard the Suchi. I mean, that doesn't really, is not really going to play any part in this matchup. Four mana. At least in this game, I mean, because four mana, you're not going to reach that. So this is a situation. We have, ooh, he's playing out a Taiga. What is his plan? Okay, he's tapping it down. Okay, I, th I thought maybe Frank had a plan. And let's see what else is he going to do. Playing. Okay, so I guess that's an other transmute artifact. Is that a proxy then, Richard? Perhaps. So he's anyway. It's it, it. I believe it's a transmute. So he's second the meek stone to the transmute artifact, and he gets an icy manipulator. Man, he wants to go all the way with his lock. I mean, he already has uh, two ICs. That's a green, and it gets tapped down. It's interesting to see that Frank is still playing out land, maybe because it's simply just better than just discarding a land. And the problem here is that Richard, of course, has that one power sink in his hand that he revealed earlier. And uh, it's going to be really difficult for Frank. So even though Richard is on one life here, it's going to be difficult for Frank to win. Because the longer this game takes, the more counter spells Richard is going to draw into. And it looks like he's going to pass turn here. Okay, so he's attacking with the factory. Going to, so Frank is going to 16, finally taking some damage. And it's, this is like uber control. So now we just have to wait until Richard has finally killed him. So he's playing an Ancestral Recall. Maybe he can find another factory. Playing a Relic bar Barrier, attacking again for two. So he's going to 14. I'm not sure why he's going to 13. I don't really, really see how the factory is being pumped. But maybe I'm missing something. So he's passing turn again. And he's discarding that Cover Tablet. It's going to 11 here. Passing turn, of course, still tapping down the lands of Frank. Can he find something? Even though those artifacts are uber cheap to cast, like only two mana each, he just cannot get further than just one measly land. And another attack going to nine here. Passing turn and wow, is it shot actually going to win this one? And attacking again, and we see Frank slowly going down. Only has four more turns. Discarding an Atok. And now he's able to deal three damage with that extra Mishra's Factory. So it's going to four. Just playing a forest, and it's really kind of an act of, of despair. He's now going to swing in for four. He's actually going to win this one. Man. And that is a prison deck for you. This is what a prison deck does. A prison deck gives you the feeling that you can win. You have your opponent on freaking one. You're playing with red. You're playing with burn. I mean, one. That should be an auto win when you're the ATOC player. But no, it didn't, didn't work out that way. Well done, Richard. Game number one is for you. Let's, uh, let's give these players some time to sideboard and we'll catch up with them in game number two.
Game number two, and uh, we have the Age of Player at least on the play, which is good for an aggro deck, of course. And I mean, you know, Richard, he was on one, so it's not like it's not a, a done deal here. And of course, we're going to see, or I expect to see a lot of blue Elemental Blast, red Elemental Blast wars here. And there's an opening with a single forest. Not, oh, look at this. Look at the Richard going Black Lotus, Mox Sapphire, Basic Island. Ay, 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 ay. And when you're when you're the the aggressor now in the game, you're like, oh yuck, this is this is the worst ever. And actually, just playing a Sylvan, I expected a counterspell here from Richard, but it's not coming. Playing a factory, playing into a Felwer Stone, tapping three and or two, I should say, and playing the Chaos Orb. Wow! And look at the amount of permanence that Richard has on the table. This is like turn two. Turn three for Frank, by the way, but man, that's just, that's crazy. And let's see if, I mean, Frank needs to put pressure on. It's kind of like a race against these prison decks, because as soon as the prison player has all the parts on the table, you know it's going to be really, really difficult to win, even if your opponent is on one. We just saw that in game number one. So, I mean, this is not a great start here for Frank. Just playing a single mountain and passing turn. And I guess, I mean, Richard is okay with that. He wants to go to the long game. He's fine He's with, with grinding it out. He's got counterspells probably in his hand. There's a Suchi. Will we see a counterspell now? Or maybe that Chaos Orb activation. And there is a counterspell. So there was some um, deliberation there on Richard's part. Thinking, should I counter or should I use the Chaos Orb? And I think Frank is now trying to play a Suchi with the counter with the mana that he think he, he gets because Suchi is countered, but it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, Suchi has to first be on the battlefield. And then when it's um, killed or destroyed, you get four mana. And there we see a Winter Orb. So already the Winter Orb combo is online here for Richard. And I mean... <sighs> I don't want to kind of ruin this matchup, but I think it's going to be really difficult here for, for Frank, close to impossible. He needs a Shatter now. I wonder if he's boarded in Shatters and Shatter Storms, because that is what you need against this deck. And I think a Shatter Storm is probably too expensive to cast, so Shatters is definitely a way, way. maybe even Crumbles, because they're only one mana. Will we see, no, not a Shatter. We see an Atok here, and he's going to flip on the ATOG, and that's a hit. And the ATOG's gone, and this is this is just full control from the control player, and now starting to deal some damage with the uh, with the factory. To make matters worse, there's a strip mine on the Mistress Factory of Frank here. This is going to be really tough for Frank. I could almost kind of call this a non-game because that opener of Richard was so strong and you know when you're playing against a deck like this opening just with a single forest I mean that's that's that sets you back so far already and there we do see a nice lightning bolt on the Mistress Factory but I mean it doesn't really matter I think And this is going to be it's going to be rough. Not quite sure who's taking the turn right now, to be honest. Uh, it looks like Frank is doing it. We seem to be looking at a pin. And is there a force coming into play on his side? Of course, then he has two mana. The only positive thing here is that Richard doesn't have an icy manipulator yet, but that's just a matter of time. And there we see a black vice completely useless at this point. It could be fuel for the ATOC if he manages to cast one successfully. Playing the ATOC, Richard allowing it probably doesn't have a counter spell on hand. And there's a transmute artifact, I think. And he's casting it on the Felwer Stone. So he's tapping Felwer Stone for mana and then casting it. And of course, he's looking up that final piece. The Icy Manipulator, playing it out, 
And that means he's going to start tapping down the lands of uh, Richard, of, uh, sorry, of Frank. So let's see if he's going to do that. And so he's going to untap. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's going to do. And he's going to tap the mountain there of Frank. So that means that Frank has no mana anymore. We saw this in game number one as well. It's really difficult to... Uh, to play around this situation. He can, of course, attack with the Atog. It's probably what he's going to do. What else can he do? That means just one measly damage. And he decides to sack his Black Vice. I think it's a good decision. The Black Vice is not really going to gonna play a big part in this matchup. At least then you deal two extra damage. Who knows what it's good for on the long run. And there's two damage here. So Frank's already on eight. That went very quickly here for Frank, his life total. And he probably had a hand that wasn't great, but he thought, I have the Sylvan in and I can play that turn two, and then I'll probably start drawing some aggressive cards and have some advantage. But then when your opponent is starting so strong, it's close to impossible to get the victory. And attacking again, Fortus is going to 6, playing a Meek Stone. And earlier I said Meek Stone was power 2 and greater. It's power 3 and greater, of course. So sorry for that mix-up. Um, and what can Frank really do here? I mean, hitting him for 1, he's going to take 2 more damage from effect. He's going to go to 4. I mean, you know, it is what it is. And he's going to look at his three cards again. He probably has to keep the Atog untapped as a blocker now. I mean, he can swing in once for free still, I guess. And he's going to attack. Going to be... F no, he's actually not blocking. So he's going to go to two. He's going to wait till the... Absolute last possible moment. That means that he's dead next turn if he doesn't play a spell. This is not going to help because the Richard is going to untap with... And he's actually going <laughs> to... Okay, he's going to play uh, Hercules Recall. But what I wanted to say is he can tap down the Atok. He's not even doing that. Interesting. Because he could have won already. He could have tapped down uh, the Atok using the Icy... And then attack with the factory, but didn't want to do that. And that's it. That's game. That means 2-0 uh, for the uh, Ice Prison player. And that was the game. So this time it was just a 2-0. Man, the game 2 was brutal. I really thought that uh, the Atok player would stand a chance. But I guess when you're facing an opening like that, I mean, the amount of permanence the Ice Prison player had on the board in game uh, turn 2, that was just... That was turn two, and that was just ridiculous. And that Sylvan Library was no way coming close to offering a solution for the ATOC player. So, Richard, congratulations. Here on the background, by the way, you see Richard's deck. And if you want to see more of his magic cards and the decks that he brews, you can actually follow him on Instagram. I believe the address is now on the screen, so you can go there if you've got Instagram. It's, uh, it's got quite a nice account. Um, as for me, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that by watching the video. Thank you for that. You can subscribe, hitting uh, the like button, leaving a comment. It all helps. Also clicking the notification bell to get updates whenever I update. And, you know, you'll be the first one to know. And you can now also um, support our channel financially. You can become a patron on the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So there should be a link popping up right now telling you where you can go to if you want to do that and talking about the patrons i'm really thankful that i have 30 plus patrons at the moment it's fantastic allowing my channel to continue to grow um, i'd like to thank them for their support let's take a look at who they are let's take a look at the end scroll